Welcome back to PTG TV. This is Antonio Hicks, Mr. Escaping the Matrix. Forgot to include this intro <laughs> with the video itself. But if y'all like this, make sure y'all hit the like and subscribe. If you don't like, leave a comment below. Let me know how you feel about it. Let me know how you feel about the Age of Machines is coming. And it, do you plan on bringing a robot out with uh, if they, once they release it out to the public? So thank y'all for tuning in this episode. Hope y'all grab y'all a snack. Just sit back and enjoy. And if you know, enjoy the conversation and make sure you turn on the notification bell so when I upload new videos, you are notified about it. So thank y'all for tuning in. Did you know Tesla's Optimus uh, Gen 2 is trying to be released for next year? So Elon is pushing to have this robot released out to not just this corporation, to the general public next year. I don't know how good that would be, especially with him having recalled every single Cybertruck on the market right now. <laughs> and it's like, man, it's a vehicle. And yeah, the vehicle, you could potentially get caught up in an accident and die from it. But to have something enter your house, I don't know, because I mean, I'm too much like I'm looking at uh, the Matrix and how stuff happened with, with like the Animatrix. If y'all remember that episode and how the machines pretty much start taking over and they got tired of being uh, killed off. That he simply did not want to die. So do you, I'm like, do you really want to push that out there? But there are a number of new robots that's coming out. Like it's a fast paced market right now. And people are coming up with their own adaptations of robots and what they perceive robots should be doing, especially human or robots. And I'm all, I'm all for Rosie. Rosie. Coming, sir. Here I am, sir. Yes, sir. The old girl's still eager, isn't she? <laughs> being put in the house, so I think it'll help my wife out a lot. I, yeah, you can say, oh, y'all being lazy. Hey, whatever. I believe when it comes to stuff like that, like we're, they're talking about now to where, you know, what we can do with uh, AI taking over jobs and putting people out of jobs or we have more freedom to be creative. I think when it comes to like home use, I think that will give you more freedom. So the things that you would typically have to do on your days that you're off of work because you're working regular nine to five, a machine could be doing for you while you're at home. And I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't care if it's cleaning because they have one of the new ones, uh, Astrobot One, with China's, uh, their, their new robot that's coming out. It can do just that. Like it has a, a Dyson. If, if, I'll show you some of the videos, but it has a Dyson and it's actually vacuuming up something off the counter. I'm cool with stuff like that. I mean, we have the robots now that clean the floors, but I mean, if you can get something that can go around and that can dust and actually uh, pull out like open AIs, their new, what is it? Figure one is called. It's actually able to fold clothes for you. So if it can go into the washing machine or dryer and pull, let's say you have to wash your clothes, but you got it in the dryer. If it can actually open a dryer up or, you know, let's say, let's say you have to do those two things because it's not able to actually open the dryers up in the washing machine up just yet. That's fine. So you open the dryer, wash, wash clothes, put it in the dryer, clothes get done drying, but you now you got them in a the basket. If it can pull the clothes out of those baskets and fold the clothes up for you, it's cutting out, it's cut out time for you because that's the number one thing people have an issue with, right? They go and fold, they wash the clothes and, and dry the clothes, <laughs> but now you got to go through the house a little. You got to fold the clothes and now you got to put them up. Well, if it can cut down one of those steps, I mean, I think it'll help you out when it comes to time. I mean, especially if you're talking about cleaning on top of it too. So if it, they have one where, I think it's the same one, the figure one where it was actually, or Astrobot, it could clean something or it could uh, water your plants. I'm fine with stuff like that. Like if it can move around the house and it's watering my plants for me or it's washing my dishes, if it can get wet like that, I don't know if that one, that one can get wet, but if it can get wet like that, I'm fine with that too. If it's cutting out a mundane task around the house, I think that's more beneficial than you actually losing your job. To me, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people would agree with that because those are some of the things that you have to deal with. We're well, not deal with because I don't want to make it sound like it's bad because I mean, it's 
work is work. I, that's how I see it. Like I'm, I'm used to growing up and having to go out and do yard work and things of that nature. But if you have machines that can take some of the tax away from you and now you can go spend more time with your family, I mean, to me, that's a win-win across the board. Because I'm all for having a Jarvis in my house, so. Wake up, daddy Sean. Welcome home, sir. Congratulations on the opening ceremonies. They were such a... It'll give you somebody else to talk to when you're at home because you don't always want to bog it. Like, I do, do stuff with politics and I do, do activism work. You know, and you know, I don't always want to bog my spouse down with some of the stuff that be taking place, especially when it comes to conversations of like politics. Because, you know, as we get older, I mean, it's, it's crazy to say, but as you get older, you really start paying attention to what a lot of these politicians are doing and policies and how they fit because it affects, your, it affects your bottom line. And so, but you don't want that to be a, you don't want it to consume too much of your conversation because, I mean, y'all see what's going on in the world. It's not all that great. So you want to have other things to talk about. But at least when you have that conversation or you want to talk about some of those topics and you have a Jarvis or your version of, of Jarvis in the house, you can deal, you can offload that on to the machine. Now, crazy part about it is it does learn from it. So, you know, I wonder if you feed it so much negativity, how, it, <laughs> how it'll restrain, restrain, it'll change up its uh, language model and how it'll start feeling <laughs> towards you because you're feeding it so much negativity. But, I mean, I guess you want to offset that with good conversation. But at least, you, like I said, if you have that, you can offload some of those topics to the Jarvis or whoever. Or it can help out with recipes, man. I mean, because I think, you know, Google has tried that with this, you know, it's um, speaker system that you can put in there. I, I'm having a brain fart. Can't even think of what they're called now. And then they have it with the tablet now that you can, you know, mount up to a speaker and it can show you videos and stuff. You can ask it to show you videos. But I think if you actually have like a real, because uh, what is it, uh, Apple Vision Pro, you can you can supposedly do that, but you got to have the headset on. Ain't nobody got time for that. So if you can get something that's like on your micro, TV that's on your microwave, and you have your Jarvis system that's installed in your house, and it can control everything and actually show you recipes and stuff and walk you through the process and like tell you as it's going, like what what seasoning to put in there, the amount of seasoning to put in there, you know, how to measure stuff out. And you know what um what goes where and it's actually and then when you get actually get stumped on something, it can show you a video of it. Yo, I that hands down, hands down. Even if you were out, you know, grilling, it can monitor the meat for you. So let's say you and you inside the house, so you like let's say you just you smoking something, you know, you're gonna smoke something, it's gonna take a long time. And they can actually monitor, they do have grills like that now. They, if, if y'all have not seen, they do have grills like that. To where it actually monitors the temperature inside of the grill and it's connected to your Wi-Fi network. And as things start to cook or heat up to a certain degree, it'll actually notify you when whatever you're cooking is done. It's supposedly done. It'll notify you that it's ready to go and come and take a, take a look at it. But if you had a machine that could actually measure that out from a, a thermometer or something that you have plugged into like the meat, then yo, I think that's great. I think when it comes to robots from that aspect of it, it is perfectly fine. Even with Elon's Optimus Gen 2, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of I'm not a huge fan of Tesla. I'm going to put it like that. I'm not a huge fan of Tesla, but I think that, you know, some people, you know, a lot of people are, everybody, everybody's some fanboys. I mean, just like people fanboys of like a Tim Cook, it's, you know, everybody fanboys. But if you got a machine out that's going to actually help people out, I mean, because I've always said it too, when it comes to the elderly. So if you're going to release a, a robot out to the public, especially like China's new well, I don't know if it's China's, but they have a new sanctuary AI in their robot, the Phoenix. And it's a humanoid robot. And it's actually it's, it's something similar to uh, Optimus, to how it's moving around and you know, the humanoid aspects of it. Yo, this thing actually weighs 150. It's 5'7", it's 155 pounds. So it's actually almost the size of a real person, weighing about the same weight of a real like human, a human person, a human man. And it can, I think it, I forget the weight qualification as far as how much it can lift. But if you have that, especially around a senior center, and they can actually talk to your seniors and give them like a company. I know it's not a real human person, but you know everybody always wants somebody to talk to. So even if you don't want to put the Jarvis in there, but you want to give them something they can physically look at, I think that's perfect. I think really that's perfect. I mean, honestly speaking, I think you know elderly should be with their kids if their kids could afford it. But if not, and they want to offload them to, you know, a nursing home or whatever, at least you have that machine around there that can help out with giving them that the talking aspect to where they're seeing and they're talking to somebody different. They can actually engage and talk back to them. But yeah, it's, um, 
Some of the things is like the Astrobot one and how fast it is. It, it, to me, it's exciting all the new stuff that's coming out because Astrobot to where it can like it can water plants, it can like pour a glass of, of wine like in a decanter. It, I mean, it's to me the precision that comes. Like, it can hold eggs without breaking them. Is what's coming out is actually amazing. I mean, it's amazing to me. Now, the sad part about it is you got to start looking at the ethical considerations that come along with that because the question that nobody has seemed to be able to really answer yet is if the robots are coming out, what are humans supposed to do? And they say, oh, well, you know, they have free time to be more creative and, you know, they can work on um, other skill sets that they will need. By 2022, the World Economic Forum projects 75 million jobs will be lost with data entry clerks and administrative workers topping the list of replaceable positions. Experts are suggesting we should focus on tasks rather than jobs. What? What the fuck? Come on, now, like one person even said that you can work and start learning, you know, getting trained on, you know, uh, software engineering. But if you look around, software engineers are getting laid off left and right now too. I, I mean, people are saying that it's because of the, the jobs they picked up during the pandemic. But I'm like, no, nah, man. I'm like, if we got all these different projects going on, especially when you're talking about AI stuff or robotics, it's like, why can't you transition those software engineers into things like, especially if you're still hiring for them and or cybersecurity because everybody's getting hacked, you know, left and right. And then you have the bias and the, um, the fairness when it comes to those machines, because remember, you know, men are programming those machines and it's no different than what we see now when it comes to facial recognition stuff and how it doesn't necessarily recognize uh, minorities. This is, you know what? Black people didn't recognize us to all of this. The, the differently, they just say that, you know, we're pretty much all the same because they had one incident that took place. I think it was in Washington state where facial, facial recognition had this man seem like he had actually committed a crime. And I think police went to go pick him up and come to find out, it wasn't even the same dude. It wasn't even the same dude. But because he was a black guy, the software in the camera system thought it was he was the same as the other criminal that it was looking for when that was not even the case. And they looked nothing alike. And he's talking about privacy and security on top of it, too. Like, if we have robots within a house, like, how much of our data is actually secured locally or is it cloud-based security? And if it's cloud-based security, then, okay, well, you know, who's watching that? Who's monitoring that? And what kind of firewalls they have in a place? Because if you got something around your house, it means it's physically in your house. It potentially might see you nude. It might see your kids nude because you're y'all got to clean up and stuff. Or it's going to see personal aspects of your life, like banking information and things of that nature. And it's like, okay, well, how who's watching that? How they're protecting us? How are we preventing that from getting into the web? And it, are people going to be trying? I know people are. People are just, people are just wild and nasty trying to hack the robots to get access to his camera system so they can see the other people walking around the house and use it for ransom and or just, you know, just to sell it, especially for the, you know, just for the, the, the porn aspect of it. Just because you're seeing the person, spouse, or even if it's just a lady walking around the house, do they want to sell it? It's, so it's, people are wild. And then you want to think about the rights of and responsibilities of having robots. What are you opening them up to? Like what, 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 what is the consideration behind that? And do they deserve a rights and protections of their own? Because again, we saw that with the Animatrix, because one of the machines did not want to be cut off. It didn't want to be disassembled. And because it didn't want to be disassembled, and the owner was like, oh, we're going to disassemble you. Then Robot took it upon itself to disassemble <laughs> the owner and his friend. Great, great anime. Y'all need to go and watch it if y'all are huge Matrix fans. I keep tapping on this table. But um, yeah, and then the militarization of AI and these robots, because you got to think of it too, we got a lot of <sighs> extremist people in this world, very extremist people in this world. And the question could be is, could we potentially, if we have a human or a robot and they have access to the weapons within our house, could we potentially offset or offload, I keep saying offload, but off, upload different applications to that robot, almost like a patch to make, to weaponize that robot to now it can do illegal crimes. And if it does so, who is responsible for it? Is it the owner? Or can you just say it was a glitch in the machine? And could you hold the owner accountable if the owner had been found to be tampered around with uh, the software within their robot? Something to think about. I never thought about that. I just thought about it just now. Yeah, there's something thinking about. Because, you again, you have extremist people out here. So what if you send your robot out, your human or robot out, to go cause harm to, to a, let's say, a neighbor that you just don't like? Or just to go commit a crime in general? I mean... 
what if you did that? And who would be liable for it if you did that? Could a person that owns a machine, like I just said before, you know, say that it was a glitch in the machine? So, I, yeah, it's... It's interesting. I don't do, do. I just want to do this quick update to talk about the different ones they have coming out and how they're going. They're just going outside of manufacturing and actually making it into your home. Something I was excited about, but just to see the rise of the humanoid robots. Because my other conversation has been about AI. And I did, you know, I always say about your AI overlords. But if you see stuff like the Terminator, the T one thousand walking around your house, it, the question is like, how would y'all feel comfortable with that? Would you like having your own personal Rosie? I, like, again, have always said that I'm open to it. And I'm not afraid about my, I mean, I don't want to lose my job. I never want to lose my job. I mean, I got bills still I got to pay too. I got kids in college. Fortune given to graduate, but I still got kids in college. And I got to be able to replenish my own stuff, my own money from spending for having kids in college. But still, I think it's, I think it's great. I'm excited for what's to come. I'm excited about, especially the AI tools that we have out now and how it's making workflow a lot easier and faster for a lot of us, especially us content creators and stuff that we can do. So for me, I'm excited about the age of machines. I plan on being that Neo because I am touched into the matrix. So I don't have a problem with uh, what's coming, but I can see some of the dangers in it and how it's going to cause a lot of us to lose work. And then the question has always been, like we said early on into this, is like, okay, well, what happens to all of those jobs? Even if you're calling yourself rebranding yourself and trying to work in something totally different, a lot of people may end up having to work blue collar jobs that never wanted to work before when it comes to like plumbing or electrical work or, you know, carpentry or things of that nature. Because they just don't, it's hard for them to learn anything when it comes to like software engineering. Because I'm, I work in technology. I've been in technology for twenty something years, but I don't know how to do any coding like that. And I, to me, I think people that know how to do that are geniuses, and they might necessarily they might disagree with me because I know they do a lot of googling and stuff. But even if you Google stuff, like I argue with people, and I'm trying to end this episode, but I argue with people about using uh, like you know chat like chat bots, chat GPT or Gemini or Copilot and things of that nature. And they say, well, you know, that's kind of cheating. I said, oh, not necessarily, because I'm like, if you can form a conversation with it and you know what question to ask, and then you proofread the stuff that it's printing now, and you ask it more questions to drill down what it is that you're actually trying to get it to print out and use for yourself, I think that's a skill in itself, too. I mean, that's why they got jobs prompt engineers to do just that. So to me, I, you know, I'm excited about it. I think it's a great tool, it's a great asset to use. And when you're talking about the human or robots, I think it's a great thing to be able to use and have around your house to free up things that you can do and that you didn't necessarily you have to do, but you're not wanted, you don't want to do all the time. Like I said, when it comes to gardening or doing particular tasks around the house, like cleaning the floors or folding clothes up or cleaning your bathrooms up. Now, of course, it's gonna put, you know, house cleaners and stuff out of business, but I mean. Sad to say, I mean, that's what we all are falling into. So if you get robots that can do just that, I mean, who wouldn't take advantage of it? Now it's something that you got in your house all the time. You don't have to worry about this extra added cost that you got to pay out to have cleaners come in, especially if you got kids. It's a ton of clothes that you got to uh, do on top of maintaining a household. So I think it's a good tool, man. I think it's good for putting in a nursing home to give people a chance, something to talk to, or those who have not gotten in relationships just yet. And they want, you know, when they come home from work, they want to have a, a connection with a partner or somebody. And I know people are going to be like, they're going to weird out about that. Well, I want you to meet somebody. Not everybody is good at meeting people. Like really real talk. Nobody, everybody's good at meeting people. So if they at least got somebody in the house that can, they can be somewhat of a companion, crazy as they might sound, I don't have a problem with that until they can actually go meet a human or robot. And our question could be, will it, if, will it get jealous if you bring another human in there? And now it, it's getting more attention than the robot is. But, um, <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in this week's episode. What well, is episode? I mean, I got more stuff coming out. But thank y'all for tuning in this episode. I just want to drop this out there because it was a good conversation, especially seeing the new stuff that's coming out with the Astrobot and the names. With well, the names, I'm just too. It's kind of crazy. But Astrobot, you got the figure uh, zero one. I think what I think it was called. But um, and then it, yeah, it's all the different robots that's coming out now. And again, like I said, Google is is putting funding towards black owned companies that's getting into the AI robotic space. They got a grant for like two hundred thousand dollars. But yeah, it's, I, I I want to talk about it because I see some of the new robots that's coming out. And then to see that Elon is pushing to get his Optimus out next year, twenty twenty five. I'm like, you know, the race for the machines and getting them out to regular conventional consumers. It's, a, it's an amazing time, and I can't wait to see what it come, what comes out of it and who going to be the early adapters of it. And then once they get them in their house, like how do they actually work? I don't think my my yeah, my house is, I got a pretty big house. I got like a, I got a, I think it's about 3,500 square foot house, but 
I, I you know, I think it. I think I need a little bit more space, but I, you know, I think it'll work if it get around where I'm not moving and it can clean the house up. So, it, but it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, y'all go check out some other episodes. Remember, y'all I stream every Monday and Wednesday right here on YouTube and on Twitch every Monday and Wednesday at between seven and eight. Sometimes don't hold me to it. Between seven and eight thirty, depending on what time I can get done doing other stuff. Like I work out in the evening, so that's why I'm typically running late sometimes. And I'm trying to stream on TikTok on Tuesdays and sometimes uh, Thursday. So follow me on my social media stuff. And it is game. So, you know, if you want to, but even though I'm playing games, I'll talk about other stuff too. So it's always like something just to, and games are a good thing. Games help you to detox and stuff from the day and get your mind off of regular stuff, especially when I was talking about the politics. So, but yeah, I mean, I still talk about day-to-day stuff just while playing games. So if you got, got time in your evening, want to spend some time with me, hell, I even open up the Discord for you want to come and have a conversation. Join us in my streams. I'm, I, I invite you in. I'm building out this community. But yeah, I'm going to get this episode out there and talk about it. And again, if y'all are into getting a podcast going, which I think you all should, especially if you have a small business because you can use it for advertising and stuff for your small business or while you are talking to people and or you're giving your elevator pitch to potential investors, you can actually push them out to see, have them take a look at your podcast that where you're going to detail about the things that you're passionate about and about your business and the things that you plan to do going forward in the future, like your five-year business, your five-year summary of what you're going to do. I think everybody should get a podcast going. But anyway, I have a book out, The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. It is out now on Amazon. It is out on Apple iBooks. And I have it on my website, ptgtv.online. That is ptgtv.online. Y'all go check it out. Check it out. And if you get it from my website, you can schedule a one-on-one consultation with me. And I'll sit down. If you have any problems within the book that you need some help with, I don't care if it's the technical stuff or the legal issues that come up, I have people that I can, that work with. That uh, You know, we can sit down, schedule one-on-one. And I'll make a video, you know, help you with, help you through it. But yeah. The Ultimate Technical Guide to Creating a Podcast. It is out now. The digital copy is out now. The physical copy will be coming out within a week or so. We're trying to get that tweaked up because the physical aspect of it looks a little different than the actual digital copy because that way you can carry it around and you can take notes and stuff. But the book is out. So go check that book out. And yeah, schedule a one-on-one consultation with me. And or if you don't want to do any of those things and you're just looking at somebody that can do all that stuff for you, then... I can do all that too. I have my other company, Engineer Tomorrow, where I do content creation, audio, video editing for small business owners to help bring their vision into life. So check that out. <laughs> and if you need somebody to do all those things for me, hit me up. I got you covered. So until next time, Matrix out. Matrix out.